Yo, 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 what up, y'all? Tight shirt, Terry Warfield, back for another video. I hope you're having a great freaking day so far. Remember to be thankful for your life today because you did not have to have that on with the meat and potatoes in the last video. I kind of apologize to y'all because I'm always reviewing expensive gear and pushing gear in y'all face. So today, we actually gonna do a tutorial. And to tell you what it's about, it's my favorite mode on the camera when it comes to photography, and that is aperture priority. Now, before we get into it, I'm not saying that you should use this mode for everything, right? This is more suited for like general photography, maybe street photography. You know, you're going on vacation or you're kicking it with your friends or you just want to, you know, have the camera do the most of the work for you while still being able to get the creative look you want. That's what we're doing with Aperture Priority. This is not for like flash photography or dedicated portraiture work or anything like that. But before we get into it, first of all, I need Editor Terry to put on some dope, vibey music from Artlist. Can you do that for me real quick, Terry? I got you, bro. I'm on Artlist right now. What you think about this one? No, no, I don't like that one. No, no, no. What? You don't like that one? All right, I got one more for you. Let me try this one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, you like that, don't you? Go ahead and play that one. Hey, y'all, if you are looking for a royalty-free professional music, sound effects, overlays for your videos, plugins, and all that stuff, you got to check out Artless. It has totally changed my creative workflow. There's a link below for you to sign up for, and if you get the annual subscription, I'll even give you two freaking free months at the end of it. Now, let's get on to Aperture Priority. Well, I guess before we do that, I gotta take another pause because not everybody understands what an Aperture does. So Terry, back at home, can you show them real quick? Fine, fine, I'll do it. Okay, let's talk aperture, right? Look into any lens and you'll see at the back of it, if you look through the glass, there's blades back there. Those blades open and close and this is your aperture. It's a diaphragm that controls two things. First of all, the amount of light coming into the camera. Second of all, it controls your depth of field. So how much is in focus in front of and behind your subject? So what are you talking about, Terry? All right, look at the bottom of my screen. You see that F1.2? This is our aperture value. Now, different lenses have different aperture minimums and maximums. This one is f1.2, and I want to show you a few things. Number one, if you pay attention to this image on the screen, everything in front of our subject and behind our subject is super blurry. Now, I'm going to increase this f number. Increasing the f number is closing down the hole in the back of the lens. So right now, this hole is as big as it can go in this lens. And as I start to close it down, you'll start to see the f number start to go up. The other thing you'll notice is you'll start to see that the image is getting darker and darker. So as this number gets bigger, the hole closes down, less and less light comes into the camera. Now, the other thing I want to show you, so let me go ahead and turn on auto ISO to demonstrate this part, is depth of field. So here's f1.2. Everything is super creamy before and after or before and after in front and behind our subject. And as we go up the aperture chain, so we are closing our aperture down you'll start to see as this number gets higher, more and more things come into focus, right? Again, just to demonstrate it, if we go back down to F1.2, super blurry. If we go up to F16, everything's in focus. And notice our ISO is being used to offset the amount of light that we're losing. So once you put the camera auto ISO, it tries to compensate because we're taking light out the camera by increasing our F number. Now it's got to bump the ISO to try to compensate. So those are two functions of Aperture. Back to Terry on the beach. Okay, so now that we have a general idea of what Aperture does, I brought my Sony a7 IV with the Ninja V to the party today so that we could demonstrate some of these principles and how to use Aperture Priority to our advantage, right? now. I always say that, you know, you should learn how to use your camera in manual mode because that's the only way if you are new to photography that you're gonna understand what, you know, shutter speed does and ISO does and aperture does. But let's just assume that you already have conquered manual mode right now. What aperture priority does or AV mode, depending on the camera system you use, and most cameras you could do this on, right? What aperture priority tells the camera is, hey bruh, I want to be able to pick my own aperture, right? I want you to do everything else. So you could do shutter speed, you could do ISO, you let me pick the freaking aperture, you could do everything else. So this also works when you go to shutter priority, same idea, but the reason I like to use aperture priority is because I'm able to control my creative look with the aperture. And when I'm running around, whether it's street photography, anything like that, I would rather be able to pick 
how I want my shot to turn out and let the camera do the rest of the work. All right, now on the A74, the first thing you need to do is turn the dial to A. If you use Canon, it might say AV, I think. If you use Nikon, I don't know, it might be like some type of alien. I'm always, <laughs> I'm always throwing shots at Nikon. But anyways, go to A and like on the Sony menu, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner, it says A along with the camera icon. So this tells you that we are in aperture priority so right now i'm set at f1.2 because you know if you own the f1.2 lens you're supposed to shoot everything at f1.2 right armando <laughs> hey yo armando hates f1.2 but neither here nor there we're going to use f1.2 today now the next thing that you need to do is set your iso right if you don't know what ISO is, it's basically the sensitivity of your sensor. So what you wanna do is go into your ISO menu and we're gonna go with auto ISO. Now you don't have to do this, you can pick your ISO if you want to, but I find auto ISO is the easiest way to take out a lot of the work that you gotta do, right? So we're gonna to go to auto ISO, we're gonna set our lowest point at ISO 100 and then we're gonna set our maximum ISO to ISO uh, 6400 now this is gonna vary per camera because different cameras uh, are stronger with higher ISOs than other cameras right you don't want to push your ISO too high because then you get a whole lot of unwanted freaking noise into your photo and everything else now in broad daylight it's gonna stay at ISO 100 because there's plenty of light but if you were to go indoors or shoot like in the evening or maybe on a cloudy day or at night it will bump the ISO to introduce more quote-unquote light into the exposure. Now there's one other thing that I need you to do before we move on, and that is if you have an A7 IV, on the top right dial, change that to exposure compensation. Or if you don't have like that dial that you can customize, maybe go into your function menu and set one of your tabs to exposure compensation. And you know what, let's move to a different spot to explain the rest of it. All right, before I can explain to you what on earth a freaking exposure compensation is, I gotta tell you what this little meter does at the bottom of your screen. So on any camera you have, whether it's a Sony camera, a Canon, a Fuji, or a Nikon, if they even <laughs> make, anyways, uh, there's a meter at the bottom of the screen, right? And the meter typically looks like plus or minus zero. And in a nutshell, without getting into stops and all that stuff, because I know a lot of you guys and gals are new to photography and have no clue what a freaking stop is, Listen, this meter tells you basically what the camera sees when it comes to exposure. Now, if you've ever been in your freaking camera menu and you've seen things like meter and mode, meter and mode is telling the camera, for example, center weighted, right? Center weighted says, I want you to pay attention to the center of the frame and tell me what you think about the exposure from the middle, right? Or if you change it to whole frame or whole scene, whatever to call, you know, whatever it might be called in your camera, which might tell the camera, hey, I need you to get an exposure of the whole scene, right? So this plus or minus zero means that when it says zero, the camera believes it to be a balanced exposure, right? I'm trying not to confuse y'all with getting into neutral grays and all that crap, but zero means, hey, this is exposed well, right? Now, if it's underexposed, you might see something like a negative 0.3 or 0.7 or minus one or anything like that. And that says that, hey, based off of what the camera sees, this is underexposed by one stop, two stops, whatever the case may be, right? And the same may be true if it's overexposed. It might say something like plus 0.7 or plus one or plus two, whatever the case may be. It's telling you whether or not the image is over or underexposed. And we use exposure compensation to change the bias of the things that we're allowing the camera control. Terry, what on earth does that what? mean? Okay. If the camera is allowed an aperture priority, like we said, to control shutter speed and ISO, me going into my exposure compensation and setting it to 0.7 under means that those decisions that the camera gets to make is going to put a 0.7 under exposure bias. I'm, I'm getting tongue tied. It's going to put that bias on it. So all the decisions it's making is saying, hey, we're going to underexpose the things that we are allowed to control. Cam I'm speaking as the camera by point minus seven EV. Or if we were to change it to something like 0.7 over, camera says, hey, Terry's allowing me to control shutter speed and ISO. So I'm going to create a bias on that of plus 0.7. So I'm going to overexpose every single thing by plus 0.7 EV, right? Now that we have those things out the way, let's go ahead and put this into freaking practice. Let me actually show you how it works. Let's get it. All right, now I'm using a 50 millimeter F1.2 gangster mode, which is an F1.2 lens. And as I stated earlier, we got to shoot everything at freaking F1.2. And I got this little plant right here that I'm going to use to kind of show you how this works, right? Now, the first thing I'm going to do is point 
at the subject. And because I know I want to shoot at f1.2, I already got it dialed in. Now, a few things are happening on the screen. First of all, my exposure meter is blinking, right? So it said, bro, this is too much light because it's already maxed out at 1 8,000th of a second. So depending on your camera, if you have like an APS-C camera, like a cheaper model, I'm not trying to be funny, but a lot of the cheaper models may only be able to go to like 1 4,000th of a shutter speed. So in this case, I really need to put on an ND filter. So let me do that real quick. I'm a big fan of these Freewell magnetic NDs. All you gotta do is put on the base. Uh, right there. And then we just plop on the ND on top of that. And it's all magnetic, right? So we don't want the CPL side, we want the ND side. So now that that's all done, if we go back over here and look at it, my exposure is way better controlled now. So now I'm only at an 800th of a second. Because we already have ISO set to auto, we ain't gotta think about that. The camera is making sure that the ISO and the shutter speed is in check, and then boom, all I gotta do is snap the photo, and there we are. Now here's the beauty of aperture priority. Let's just say, in this one particular instance, F1.2 was too freaking blurry. Like, I might be doing street photography and I might wanna get some of the background or some of the scenery. Here's where the beauty of aperture priority comes in. I heard something behind me. Hey, I, I keep it on me at all times. I ain't playing no games. I stay in a relatively unsafe area where this part is, so I gotta be, gotta watch my back. But anyways, so we had F1.2, and although that looked great, what if I did wanna bring some more of the background into the frame, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and bump my aperture up, or I should say stop my aperture down. Let's use the correct terminology. Let's go like F5.6. Now you can already see in the frame how way more the background is in focus. And it also reduced my shutter speed down to 1 80th. And because I'm using auto ISO, bang, there's my photo. Now, I'm not saying the aperture priority is always ideal because let's say it is dark outside, right? Then aperture priority will get you in a situation where, because it's trying to keep your zero exposure or whatever you dial your exposure comp in, which I'm gonna show you that in one second, it might slow your shutter speed down to like one over 25th of a second, which is way too slow to capture a subject and offset the movement of your hands. So aperture priority does work for general photography. When you get in a situation where aperture priority is trying to maybe slow your shutter speed down way slower than you want it or uh, bump your ISO up way too high, then of course you might have to take countermeasures, right? But I do wanna show you how exposure compensation will work. So right now I'm at zero. Let's go into the menu. And let's go turn exposure comp up to maybe like one stop overexposed, right? So now, as you can see, it brightened the image up and you can see on my exposure meter, now it says I'm plus one over, which means I'm overexposed and I'm doing this on purpose. And then bang, it does the same thing. I take the picture and there's my image. Now, if I wanted to underexpose on purpose, I would just go back, change my exposure compensation down to like negative one. And the camera again will still change the shutter speed and the ISO to compensate. So let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Let's get it. So as you see, aperture priority is an amazing way to shoot when it comes to general photography. It eliminates the guesswork, right? Now you can use shutter speed and stuff like that. I prefer aperture priority for things I stated earlier. First of all, I get to pick my creative look. Shutter priority would be great if I was maybe doing light trails and all that stuff. But when it comes to static photos, aperture priority gives me the control I want. I'm able to get my creative look. I ain't gotta worry about the shutter speed unless it's too dark. And if it's too bright, I just slap an ND on. I ain't gotta worry about my ISO because I set it to auto and I, I know what my camera's acceptable limits are for ISO. And then I can use exposure compensation when I need to fine tune things a little bit, right? So for me, when I'm going out doing street photography or when I go out of town and I know I just wanna take a bunch of dope photos, I'm able to set my aperture and forget about it. I just shoot and have fun with it. And honestly, it's one of the best things about aperture priority. So, hey, I hope you learned something in this freaking video. I know I've been all over the place, but it is what it is. That's what happened when you like me and you don't script videos. I just came out here trying to give y'all some knowledge uh, and I'm gonna start giving y'all more of these tips and tricks that I use on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to photography and making videos, being a content creator, all that stuff. Make sure you sign up for Artlist. The link is down low in the description. Two free months at the end of your annual subscription. On me, until next time, I'm out of here. Tight shirt, Terry Warfield. Piece of chicken grease, I'm out. Peace.